Hey guys, Tim at Seekbeak here. Um, my pal Matt over at Be More Colorful asked the other day how easy it's going to be to create custom buttons using the new overlays feature. So I said, well, why don't I make a video? And well, that's what I've done. So Matt has kindly provided some images for us to muck around with, and I'm gonna show you how easy it is to create some custom buttons. So it's got some real estate shots here. I've only uploaded a few of them because it's just a demo. So these are the ones I've got already uploaded and I'm gonna go over to my overlays and I've created a custom button overlay, which is blank currently. So what I'm imagining is we're gonna have a little menu down here with uh, four of the buttons that Matt has supplied. And uh, if you click them, they'll go to a different room. So I'm going to create a container node and this is going to hold all of our buttons. And I'm thinking we'll probably put them kind of in a horizontal view like this, and uh, they will be all uh, nicely arranged in there, which means I'm gonna need to go and turn on the flex container to a row. Uh, and now I'm gonna go and I'm going to insert an image. So I've uploaded the uh, icons that Matt supplied already. So here's my first image. And what I'm gonna do is First of all, I'm gonna adjust the size of it because right now it's defaulted to 25% of the height, which is pretty tiny. What I want is I'm gonna want it to take up the full height. There we go. Okay, so now if I click this, uh, I've got the image selected, which is taking up the entire area. So you can see here, I've got image selected. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to the uh, layers here and I'm going to rename this the menu container. And inside the menu container, of course, is our image. And this will be image one, I'll call it. <laughs> now, at any point, if you do get uh, mixed up and things are behind other things, et cetera, et cetera, you can always come here and select them. Uh, hovering over it will show you which one is which and clicking it will actually select it. So I'm gonna just keep image one selected. I'll go to its properties. I'm gonna change its image. I've uploaded a team file already. And I'm gonna say, choose my file and let's do the house one first. So this is the uh, the white icon here, which is not looking very, very good because we need a darker background. So let's have a muck around with the background, shall we? So I'm gonna go do that trick and I'm gonna select the menu container here and I'm gonna go to background color and I'm gonna change that to a darker. Well, let's, let's jazz it up a bit. Last time we did this, it was kind of gray and boring. Now we can do kind of like this ruddish, ruddy gray-ish here. All right, let's, let's call it Santa Fe, a little Santa Fe. Uh, okay, so our icon is now a little more visible, which is nice. And what I want to do now is uh, I'm going to add some actions. So right now, when we go to this simulator here, nothing happens, okay? So we kind of want... We wanna do a, a hover effect so we can see that, yeah, there's something there to click. And then of course, later on, we want it to click and actually do something. So let's do the hover effect first of all. So I'll select my image. I'm gonna add an action. What kind of action? How about a hover on action? Now, uh, as this image is already kind of white, I was thinking we could do like an opacity where it would fade in or fade out, but it's already, it's it's kinda, there's not a whole lot of icon there. So maybe let's, uh, let's enhance it a bit. So. I'm gonna go turn on a border for it. Let's turn on a little two pixel border for that image. And right now, of course, because the image is taking up the whole thing, the border looks a little bit wacky because it's the whole thing, which for now, that's fine. We'll leave it at kind of, yeah, we'll leave it at a white. However, when we hover over it, we want to do an animation and we want that animation to affect image one, which is this guy. And what kind of animation? Well, how about we change the border? Uh, and right now, the thing that we can change is the border color. So we can change the border color to, um, oh geez, what looks good with the red? I need some, I need some designers here. Uh, let's do, <laughs> let's do a yellow. Let's change it to a bright yellow. Uh, and we will make it, 0.2 of a second, so it's super quick. So now if I go to the preview, whoop, you can see the border has changed to bright yellow. <laughs> you can't actually really see that. Uh, let's change that. Let's change that to a bit more of a, uh, a hideous color here so we can see it. Uh, maybe a dark blue. There we go. Uh, okay, so great. Hover on works. It's now turning dark blue. However, of course, once you've hovered on it, that's it. That's all it does. So we need to also say, all right, 
what happens when we hover off of it. So uh, what I can do is I can duplicate the hover on animation. So we still have our original hover on, and this is a duplicate. Now we can say hover out. And of course, because I duplicated it, it still has that image selected, which is nice. And we still have a border animation in here. And what I can do is I can read this little uh, helpful tidbit down here. It says clearing the color will animate back to the original border color. So the original border color is white. So all I have to do is click this clear. And because this is basically now saying animate back to whatever it was set to before, if I go to the preview, I should be able to hover over it. And magically it goes back to the way it was. All right. So I'm going to save this. Saving often is very key when you're dealing with beta software. Uh, and so now that's kind of cool. And what I want to do is add a click event, jump to snap and the house, let's go. I'm going to select my group. I did a real estate tour in here and let's have it go to the main, eh, let's go to the front door. Let's do that. The exterior entry. Um, great. Okay. So that's done. And now if I go to my snaps and if I go, let's, let's just jump right into the master bathroom, shall we? And you can see here is our giant house menu. And if I hover over it, the hover's all working. And if I click it, sure enough, we jump to the front door. Okay. So that is working as we want it to. Uh, now we just need some more buttons. All right, I'm gonna select my house icon here and I'm gonna fold open options. I'm gonna duplicate it. And now we have two houses and I'll duplicate it two more times to give us four buttons. Now I'm gonna go and change the icons. So background image, I'm gonna change the house into, uh, let's do the bedroom next. And then I'm going to do the kitchen. Finally, favorite icon, the bathroom guy. Now, if I go into the preview mode, hover, 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 hover. Why does that work? Well, first of all, I'll tell you why it might not have worked. Uh, the hovering, if you remember, is controlled by the actions, the hover on and hover off. Now, when you duplicate an item, uh, it duplicates all the actions and all the animations associated with it, as well as duplicating the target. Now, SeekBeak is smart enough to know that if you only have one target selected, the odds are that when you duplicate it, you want it to be able to select or to target itself basically. So if I open up this next button here and I uh, open up the targets, you can now see that it has changed the target from this one to this one. This only works if you only have it self-selected. If I had had multiple things selected, SeekBeak's not gonna mess around with it and we'll leave it as is and duplicate it. However, that's a huge time saving thing where it will apply any actions that it's only happening to itself, uh, it will now apply them to the duplicate as well. So you don't have to keep going and selecting different targets. So all of these are now uh, hovering. All the hover effects are the same. However, they're all still linking to the same image. So what I can do is I can now go and change the click event, which I just closed. Uh, I can change that. Now this is the bedroom one. So I can say, okay, well, let's do the master bedroom. This one is gonna be the kitchen. Uh, yeah, and then this one will be the bathroom, of course. Taboo. Okay, now let's take a look at how this is going to look on mobile. So right now, if I select my menu container, get the properties for it, you can see that we're positioned top and left relative. What I want is just to kind of make things tidy. I will just position this to the bottom and right and I will turn those off and I will make it appear. I don't know, let's do, let's do an even, no. how about five? How about five pixel or 5% from the right and 3% from the bottom. Now, if I go and I view this on like an iPhone, for example, that looks all right. That also looks all right maybe a little bit closer to the right, actually. We'll just nudge it up against there. Uh, so I'll set it back to responsive. And go select my menu and say, okay, let's actually do 2% and 2%, nice and tidy. Save that. Let's go see how it actually looks in situ. Look at this. So now we have all our hover effects working and we can click on the bedroom and sure enough, we are warped to the bedroom. Kitchen, 
we go to the kitchen, bathroom, we're in the bathroom. Easy peasy. So we have now just generated our own custom menu, which, uh, well, follows us wherever we like. Now, what if we don't want this menu there all the time? Let's go and add a button to open that. So I'm gonna insert a new image. Again, it's gonna be a team file and it's gonna be <laughs> this giant menu button here. Uh, maybe we'll stick it up there. Um, and again, to the actions and we'll say, okay, well, when someone clicks this menu, we want to uh, hide or show a node, right? Node visibility. Uh, what node do we want? We want this one. We want the whole menu container to disappear. So we can do a toggle on that. And so now if we toggle this, sure enough, it toggles on and off. Probably don't want it just to jump around uh, on and off like that. We want to add a little bit of animation so we can easily do that. There's a little tip here that says if you're doing toggle, the best thing to do is use an alternating animation, which will go from, you know, for example, this opacity one. If we set it to alternate, it'll go from 100 to 0, and then from 0 to 100, depending on uh, how we're toggling it. Uh, and that looks like that. Right? Very, very simple to get things hiding and showing and looking nice. We can easily change that to do a move as well. So we can slide that off screen to the right. Boom, just like that, there's our menu. And then if we wanted to, because of course you can layer actions and animations, we could do something with the menu as well. So we could have the menu, well, I don't know, we'll have the menu rotate around, the menu button, just cause. So we can uh, we'll restart that and we'll just say, do a whole loop. Do a whole loop-de-loop. -loop. <laughs> well, that was not at all what I wanted to do, but that also shows you how you can layer animations. The reason it did that, of course, is because I'm targeting this. So what I want to do is I want to delete that rotate, and I'm going to do uh, another animation, sorry, another action. That, uh, that clicks this. So when we click this, I just want to I just want to animate. I don't want to do anything. I just want to animate the this image, which is we haven't renamed, so it's just called image. Then I want to do the rotate animation. We'll do 360, and we'll say okay. Every time we click it, restart. So do that again. So now there we go. The menu does its little flip around animation. This thing slides in and out, we're good to go. Quick check on mobile to see how this button resizes. Sure, works for me. Get out of there, save that. Let's go to the living room. And our menu appears after everything's loaded. We can tuck this out of the way. Of course, in the preferences, you can hide this, but uh, for this demo, we'll just keep it there right now. Uh, if I click on the home icon, sure enough, we're warped back to the house. The bedroom, bedroom, the kitchen, and the bathroom, guess what? Here we go. Okay, so now the menu button also, whoop, does its thing. Slides the menu in and out very smoothly. Uh, everything's working great. So now we've got a custom menu set up that we're able to animate and fold out of the way. And uh, well, clicking on these things does what they want. They have hover events. And we did that all in all of 10 minutes or so. Mm -hmm.